<laughs> Welcome back. Now it's time to meet two young men who bring a whole new meaning to the phrase holiday camp. First, please welcome entertainer John Sharples. <laughs> Hello, John. Hi. What a suit. Thank you very if much. I'd know, what a suit. Do we like his suit? <laughs> there we go. That is, that is, what's the material? Uh, it's lame, pink lame. <laughs> pink lame. Yeah. Never gone out of fashion. I don't no. think pink lame would quite suit you. <laughs> Never no. gone out of... I've got one big enough, I'd definitely wear it. <laughs> but uh, what's the problem with your partner? Right, well, basically, uh, the guy's got a problem with gambling. Arcade machines, he's actually bought one and put it in his room, and it keeps me awake because uh, it pays out in two pences, you know. So he's put an arcade machine in his bedroom? Yeah. Why would he do that? Because he's addicted, basically. <laughs> you go out with him, you never see him, and then... He goes home and plays it, and four o'clock in the morning, you can hear it paying out. And he's snoring. <laughs> and then, yeah, and, and snoring as well, yeah. And what's worse, the, the arcade game or the snoring? It's just as bad, because when he finishes playing the machine, he goes to bed and snores. And how loud is this snoring? It's horrendous. Really bad? <laughs> really bad, yeah. Actually, we've got, a, we've got some audio of his snoring. I think you gave us this tape that you yeah. recorded the other night. Yeah. Let's hear, let's hear Phil's snoring. <laughs> 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 and you get this every night? Yeah, it's like Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. And you tried to stop it? I've, done, I've, I've asked him, I've pleaded with him, you know. I mean, I can understand the snowing a little bit, but the gambling thing is the problem. Because you've had the noise. I've, yeah, I'm fed up. It's time to change. It certainly is. OK, well, let's see what you had to say to us earlier on. Hi, my name's John, and I'm here to tell you about my friend Phil, who lives and works with me at Pontins at Southport. Now, he lives in the apartment upstairs from me, and he's addicted to gambling machines, you know, the arcade machines, and he's had one put in his chalet, it cost him 40 quid second hand, and all I can hear at night is this 2p machine going doot, 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 all the time, then paying out and chugging out money, and it wakes me up, obviously. Then he decides it's time for him to go to bed, and he snores. It's a dreadful racket. It's like a... <laughs> it's dreadful. It's, it makes me feel ill. Anyway... Phil, it's got to stop. I've got to tell you, get rid of that machine and sleep on your stomach and stop snoring. Thank you. You've had enough of the snoring. Well, yeah, they you see, yeah. Now, tell us, wh where do you both work what, and what, what's the act you have? Well, we work at Pontins, um, which is a holiday centre. Um, I'm in the entertainment department and Phil is on sales and reservations. So we, don't, we actually do work together. We do a, like a chalet party in the bar and we do sort of like comedy and song and all this sort of thing, impressions and things. And do you, what, does one do the comedy, one does the song? No, we both do comedy. So this is what, is it red coats or is that another, that's another Blue company. coats. Blue coats. Well, not, so, not, not so blue. Or yes. not so blue as the case may be. No. <laughs> no, well, pink coats. Pink I? coats. Well, as we always say, there are two sides to every story. So please welcome the other half of the double act, Phil Lorking. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Welcome to the show. So, what's all this stuff you bought? Is this, you bought a good book to read on the sofa. You've, oh, seen, you've seen the show before, then. <laughs> so, what is all this stuff you, you brought here? Well, he's got a problem. He's a very, very sad man. <clears throat> I went into his chalet last night, and the noise I get from all these Spanish tapes is one, two, three, four, five. There's six out. What must be at least 600. His Spanish tapes? Spanish tapes. Be because <coughs> why's, he, why's he got all these Spanish tapes? He's obsessed with Spain. He's totally obsessed you with Spain. right to go in <laughs> the <sky>. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you two. Excuse me. Listen, you two. <laughs> you said to me, go downstairs. <laughs> Don't you ever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's been in my show. Listen, you two. Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hold on. Hold, Hold on, you two. We'll, get on, we'll, we'll find out about all the Spanish thing in a minute because this is what you had to say to us earlier on. Hi, my name's Phil and I work at Pontins with my best friend John. I've known him for about eight years and he's got one big problem. He thinks he's Spanish. He's learnt Spanish and he's really possessed with it. When we go on holiday, all I get is him gabbling on in Spanish. It really gets on my nerves. In fact, one of these days, I'm going to snap. And now I'm going to tell you about him going on and on and on because he lives down below me. All his music is Spanish. Take that, Wigfield, blow your Estefan. It just gets on my nerves. I'm really at my tether's end. 
If he could get an operation, it would turn himself into a Spaniard. So, John, sort yourself out, you're British, and stop trying to teach me Spanish. I don't want to know. I'm British, I'm proud, so just shut up, please. Well, there you have it. Can I just clear up something first? Take that, Spanish. Well, put it this way. No, let's that, put it this no, way. Let me put Excuse it this me. Way. <laughs> this is his, and it's in Spanish, and it's take that. So don't you start blaming no. me. No. And this Celine Dion, oh, okay. this is Spanish, and that's yours as well. <laughs> so don't you start. It's got on one me. track on that's in Spanish. Got another track on the Spanish. That's from the, the film that they had. That was like a, a picture because I like to take that anyway. But yeah. you borrowed it because it was Spanish. And another thing is, though, at the end of the week or the end of the fortnight, you'll see what the current top ten is, and if it's got a Spanish version or a Spanish like Pepsi Popper mix, whatever it is, you'll go out and buy the top ten with a Spanish version John, on it. What is this obsession with Spain? That well, you've got? can I just say first, I am proud to be British. But I went on my holidays to Spain, and I go quite a lot in the winter, and I think you should speak the language of the country that you're in. I have respect for people, and I tried to learn it, and I'm proud of the fact that I've learned the language. So give us I something... did it out of school, I'm proud of the fact that I've done something on my own and learned a language. What's he doing? He's spending all his money on a machine. Well, give us, something, give us some of your Spanish, then. You learned a bit of the lingo. OK. Uh, buenas noches, bienvenidos a UVK uh, Viviendo. That's good evening and welcome. Well, I think we think that's pretty good, don't we? Good, good evening and welcome to UK Living. But that's that's not that's not the end of it, is it? He's that's clearly not. ramming the Spanish thing down your throat. He is at the end of the day. Can't but the thing is, though, so, no, just, no, just, just do, minute, listen, no, sunshine. No, I won't listen. No, you're getting it all wrong. <laughs> no, no. Just get wrong. John, why am I getting it all wrong? Tell you're me. Getting it all wrong because I'm not ramming anything down his throat. <laughs> I'm pleased to know. Listen. He's the one, he's the one who, coming down here in the car, four and a half hours on the way down here, it gets my books out, and he's saying, what does this mean? What does that mean? What's the other mean? It's just as bad as me with it. Yeah, that was something to keep you awake. Speak, it's just jealous. All right, hold it. Anyone can play on a machine. Well, hold it there, you two. Here we have two old friends who now irritate the hell out of each other. But should Phil tell John it's hasta la vista, or should John tell Phil to shut a la mouth, especially when he's asleep? What do our audience think? Who here's got a problem with... <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Who's got a problem with someone snoring? Have you... What, what do you think of these things? Well, haven't you two um, thought about uh, going to another chalet and separating, you know what I mean? Well, well, what about a split? Together. Would you two well, split don't live in the same chalet. He lives upstairs. Yeah, and well, you thought of going to another chalet or something like that. I've been there well, for six years. complaining against the place. I've been there for six years and only been there three months. <laughs> <laughs> I thought at first he was being a bit out with his fruit machine, but... The bloke in the pink, he listens to Take That. <laughs> Get him away from me. Hang on a minute, you're wrong. Right. That's <laughs> his, not mine. He's the Take That fan, not me. He listens me. to Take That. It's no excuse. Um, Execute him. And what about... <laughs> I'd like to answer a question. I snore myself. I snore severely as, as bad as what you do. All right? Has he tried any remedies? Because yep. my girlfriend doesn't know why I snore, but she, she don't do anything like keep me out of bed. Phil, yep. have you tried anything? I have tried remedies, but like, I don't know if like, they work or anything. Like... <laughs> You know, have a few extra drinks. Do you think you're going to conk out? Or, and you have know? you tried pushing him? Yeah, Tennis balls on the back of the pyjamas. In all fairness, it's not the snowing. It's this machine that pays out Excuse at 4 o'clock in the it's morning. The no, but the, no, the fruit That's machine, the though. That's the problem. The fruit machine's not a problem because, like, I'm saving... I'm not gambling away some money. That money's going into my own chalet. At the end of the day, I've got a key. If I want that money, Hold it there, you two. Hold it there, you two. <laughs> now it's time to find out who's sorry now, or as John would say, quien lo siente ahora? <laughs> Thank you very much. The studio audience is going to vote for who they think is in the wrong. The person they cheer loudest for will have to take their chance on the wheel of shame. Ooh. Remember, they're voting for who gets the forfeit. So if you think John spends too much time trying to be Spanish and should stop nagging his friend and be proud to be British, then cheer now. Yay! But if you think Phil spends too much time playing the machines and keeping his friend awake at night with his snoring, then cheer now. <laughs> well, very close run thing there, but the audience has spoken, and Phil, you're sorry now. <laughs> Anything to say? That's life, isn't it? Better quit the snoring. Yeah. Tennis awesome. ball, tennis ball on the back of the pillows. <laughs> but as you know, the loser has to pay a forfeit. So Phil, come and join me and let's reveal the wheel of shame. <laughs> Phil, 
And Phil, stand by to pull the lever because your Who Sorry Now forfeit is. Party time! And that means that you've got such a hatred of the Spanish that we were giving you your very own castanets. So you can play some Spanish castanets through the middle of the night. That's all for today. I'd like to thank Samantha and Monique and John and Phil. And I'll